Hi YouTube, it's Tracy from Entrepreneur Girl and today is Tracy's Tuesday Tips and we're going to be talking about tips on selling books on eBay and Amazon. You've seen from lots of my other previous videos, I love books and why do I love books? Because they're easy to sell, they don't break, they're easy to ship, there's no special wrapping. Also, they're easy to get and they're inexpensive to get. So you can get books from a lot of different sources. I'm going to put a big list up at the end of the video if you want to skip forward to that, but I hope you don't because I have lots of tips I want to talk to you about today. We're going to be sourcing all day long, whether it's at a book sale or a curriculum fair. There are certain supplies that I like to always bring with me. And so I just wanted to give you a quick peek into the types of items that I'm bringing. So I always bring a snack and water and I don't want to, people think, oh, I don't need that. But you really do because when you're hungry <laughs> and when you're thirsty, you just can't think right. And it kind of makes you speed through the process because you don't want to stay there as long. And then this, I couldn't deal without, I have a whole video on this one. This one's my dolly. I got it from Home Depot and I love it because I can just transport big boxes of books out of the cell. I always bring a backpack or some kind of book bag as well with me and that's what I carry on my person as I'm walking around the cell. This is also my chair. If I'm going to be doing a lot of scanning with my scan fob, then I like to bring this because it's real small and lightweight and it's not cumbersome and I can just set it down on the floor and then it's not so hard on your knees if you're going to be sitting there and scanning a lot of books. Of course you want to bring your phone and have it fully charged and bring an extra phone charger. That I learned at the very beginning. You can plug this into the car and keep it charged up and have it ready to go. And the last thing is bring cash. Don't just assume that places are going to take check or credit card because a lot of times they won't. So make sure you stop and bring cash. And that's all the supplies. Okay, so we're on our way. So I wanted to talk to you about some things that I preview um, once we first get to our location. So I like to get there early, that way I can walk around and see, snag anything that I think is gonna be a really good find. But I also like to get there at the very end too. So if I'm not gonna stay the duration, I make sure I come back at the end so I can get the end of the day sales. Sometimes they do a dollar a bag or $5 a box, or you can network with the manager and see what they do with all the books that they're not going to use. Maybe you can make a deal where you take all of them for $20 or maybe they'll even donate them to you. Um, other things that I like to do is see if they have any discounts. There might be VIP discounts or teacher discounts or if you're going to buy in bulk a lot of times um, they'll give you a discount. It doesn't hurt to ask so sometimes even just asking they'll give you a better price. And the last thing I do is I try to get all of my books for less than a dollar. And if I can, I like to get them for 10 cents or even five cents a piece, which, you know, the Friends of the Public Library sales are really good for that. Anytime you're buying huge quantities, um, you're able to find that. Now, one thing I did want to add is if I'm scanning a book, I might pay $5 for a vintage book that I can turn around and sell on Amazon for $25. However, if I'm not scanning them, say I'm getting 400 books and I get to pay $30 only for it, I'm not really worried about scanning it because I know that it's going to be profitable for me and the people aren't going to you know, sit around and wait there while I scan 400 books and I don't want to scan 400 books there. So if, my, if I'm going to be paying like five cents a book, I really don't worry about it. I take everything home. Some books are going to be penny books and useless. There's going to be fiction books in there, which I don't like, and they're probably going to be useless. But what I'm going to find is going to far surpass the five cents a book that I paid. Um, I've been talking to Gavin. He's my helper today. So we're talking about categories that are profitable and I'm sure it varies with every person, but my favorite, my top favorite, uh, say six top favorites are probably vintage textbooks, which are also homeschooling, college, any type of textbook, um, coffee table books like that have pictures, sports cars or sailboats, anything that might, people might collect or have a hobby of. Um, how to or self-help books are really, really good. 
history books and um, probably media. You know, I like uh, CDs and different type of media sources like that. So that's what we're mainly going to be focused in on on the cell and we're going to see how it's organized on our walk around and see where those particular categories are located before we begin. Um, things I like to look for too in specific books is I typically like a rank under a hundred thousand um, but it's kind of more loosely defined with books and I like my margin to be three to four dollars uh, net profit per book but that doesn't always happen with books either and I don't you to forget and get too hung up on ranking I know that's been a topic on um, a couple of my last videos but I make a lot of money on loan tail items so as long as I'm not getting the extended fees from the Amazon warehouse and I'm constantly sending in book um, boxes to the warehouse I throw long tail items in those boxes all the time so I might have books that are over a hundred thousand I throw them in the box they sell sometimes that year and I don't really worry about it because it's still money to me and you know at five cents a book I'm not exactly waiting for the return on investment because it's only a five cent you know cost of goods so that's why sometimes you'll see me dismiss ranking if the cost of goods is low enough for me and you know I just have so much inventory now in the warehouses that I'm not really worried about you know I'm only sending in 20 items and I need that money back as fast as I can so my perspective might be you know a hair different than yours on that but I did kind of you know want to explain myself so now we are going to uh, head to the cell and then I'll show you what we got and this is what it looks like when you're done <laughs> this horrendous stack of books and I just kind of stack it up until I can list it and go through it but that's what it looks like Selling books, examples of places to find books. I'm just gonna run through this real fast for you guys. Thrift stores, uh, you could talk to the manager about buying excess books in bulk. Garage sales, I offer to buy all the books at the sale for a certain amount. Book sales, examples of this would be the Friends of the Public Library, neighborhood sales, church bag sales. Craigslist, run an ad yourself. Search for ads that already exist for book lots. Facebook, your local groups, you can post an ad for books, you can look for ads that are already selling books, or you can join local garage sale groups. Bookstores, hey guys, don't assume that the prices are too high here. That's what I did, but really, if you can find one that's going out of business, or even if you're just browsing the sell sections, you can find some really good deals. Uh, recently went to Barnes & Noble and hit just the sell sections and was pleasantly surprised by that one. Goodwill, pay by the pound centers. These are different. They're not the regular stores. They're much, much cheaper. And if you haven't checked it out, you really should, if nothing else, for the experience. Flea markets, dumpsters, school district or university surplus. This can take a while to navigate and arrange, but it's well worth it because you're networking with people and you're doing the supply chain to get the books over and over and over again. So a lot of time on the front end, but well, well worth it because you'll, you're setting up years here of books. Antique stores or marts, um, the hole in the wall, those small towns, those are really the best because they're desperate to make sales and they really negotiate on their price. Storage units, um, you can uncover many, many books in these storage units. The only problem is, is that you uncover a lot of other junk too. <laughs> so since there's such a variety of inventory found, it's best to pair up with someone. Maybe someone's interested in just clothes and you're interested in books and you can agree to split the cost and split the merchandise. Auctions, you can go online or in person. Outlet stores like Big Lots, Alleys, um, I'm sorry, Ollie's, etc. Um, I like these because you can find the new in the package items, but they still have a decent profit margin. Recycling centers, they can be a source of books forever if you can figure out how to network here. eBay, uh, book lots on eBay. Um, you can find them cheaper and then you can sell the, the lot of books, but individually on Amazon and make a profit. 
friends, let your circle of friends, your church, any sports that you're involved in, just any circles that you have, let them know that you will pick up any unwanted books. You'd be surprised how many people want to get rid of books and just don't know how, so they just kind of hang on to it. Newspaper, run an ad that you will clean out attics and garages for free if you could just keep the merchandise. A lot of people just don't want to deal with the clutter or they have an elderly person that's moved out into a home and they just don't want to deal with cleaning out the houses and all the headaches that go along with it. So if you place an ad that you will do all the heavy lifting and all the moving out um, and your payment is just the stuff, a lot of people will go for it. Websites, these are some of my favorite. Freecycle.com, auctionzip.com, and booksellfinder.com. Longest garage sales. You see these garage sales that go across America? They are so much fun. Um, an example of this is the 127sell.com. You just bring your van or an enclosed trailer or whatever, take three days, run the duration, you know, as far as you can get. I've never made it all the way through. Um, just go as far as you can get, and you're only looking for books. And that's it. So happy book hunting. Hope those tips were helpful. Thanks for going with us today, guys. I hope you learned a lot about books, tips for books on eBay and Amazon. If the content was helpful, put a thumbs up below, make a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I look forward to the next video. Bye, guys. Like, look at me or something. Okay. <laughs> Wait. No, you just gotta. Well, I'm filming, so just whenever you're ready, I'll just cut out the first part. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's hard for me to start that way. So when I'm going to. <laughs>